Following successful installation of DR5 onto your PC, you will now have an icon on your desktop. To run the program, double click this icon and then the program will show the next window, which is for activation of the product. The software will allow you up to 30 days of usage before activation is required. To apply for an activation code, complete the organisation box. And then enter the serial number which is shown on your licence agreement. Then copy to clipboard and then paste this into Outlook or your email package. And send this to service at huntleydiagnostics.co.uk. When we receive this email, we will send you back an activation key, which can then be copied and pasted into the activation key box. Press Activate in the software and you will see the band goes green. Press OK and your software will now become fully activated. To connect the Doppler to the software package, first of all connect the USB cable provided to your PC and to the Doppler. The Doppler accepts the micro USB cable end. Once these are connected, you will hear a sound from your PC to say the USB has been detected. Turn on the Doppler and you will see the Doppler symbol go green. It was previously black. If it turns red, it indicates that the software in the DMX Doppler is of an old version and you will need to be upgraded to utilise all the features of the DR5 software. If you have difficulty in connecting the Doppler to your computer and obtaining the green symbol, then go to the settings menu. Click the down arrow, select then the USB cable symbol and you will see it is set to auto. You can select different COM ports here. So for instance, COM port 3 can be used and this will now reboot the software and force the COM port to always be on COM3. This is now in fact the incorrect COM port that I am using, so I will now switch it back to COM6, and you can now see that the green Doppler symbol will appear and allow full connection to the Doppler. To edit the test profiles, Go to the Doppler menu. Select the Edit Test Profiles button. Now the different preset test profiles will be shown. Here you can see tabs along the top of different profiles which have been preset in the software. You can select one of these which match the type of test you are conducting. Or you can start a new test or set a new profile. First of all, we will show you how to edit an existing profile. If there are too many vessels that you want to do on the leg arteries test, then you can easily delete some of these by selecting the red cross on the right hand side. For instance, we do not want to do the femoral artery or the superficial femoral artery, so we can delete those from the profile and also at the top of the list. So now we are left with the remaining vessels. The order in which you have these shown is the order in which you do the test. 
On the right-hand side is the order in which these vessels will be printed out. As you can see, Popliteal will be at the top and Orsalis Pedus at the bottom of the page. Once you are happy with this profile, which we have selected as leg archeries, you can press OK and these changes will be saved. Looking at Edit Test Profiles again, there are mixed profiles. For instance, you can select a diabetic clinic. Here we have toes and vessels from the ankle. Again, these are done in this order. So we will do toe pressures first and then ankle pressures. If for any reason you want to change this around, what you do is just move the vessel up. And we move the position of the vessels being investigated to a different order. So now we will be doing the left dorsalis pedis and then posterior tibial, followed by the right dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial, followed by the left and right great toes. This is the profile I will use to demonstrate the next section. To produce a new profile you can press the Add button and name this profile whatever you want. So we could call this Vein Clinic. Then we can select different vessels. As you can see here, Great Saphenous Vein. Add another vessel, the Great Saphenous Vein. And we can do the left and right side. We will change this to Venus Doppler and you can see the band changes to blue. This means that you will now be recording Venus mode in the Doppler itself. You can now accept the changes or add other vessels if you feel you need to extend your type of test. So we are looking for the short saphenous vein and we will do the two lefts together and the great and short saphenous on the right side. So this is the order which we will undertake the measurements. Here we are going to show you how to edit the patient text. So go to the settings menu and then select the edit standard patient text icon. Here we have a blank box where you can add in free text to describe the patient's existing conditions. So for instance, these text boxes can contain a large sentence or a few words to describe the patient's conditions. I can illustrate this by adding a few. The patient is diabetic. Then we can add another one. They have a leg ulcer, which is a typical problem. Here we have walking pain at 100 metres. And then left leg amputee.
Then if you want to delete these, you can delete the item. If you want to move them up the list, just select the up arrow. This list can be large and quite extensive. You will see that these will come through in the text editor later on and will save you repeatedly adding similar or the same text every time you see the type of patient. This is where we show you how to edit the test text. Go to the settings menu and click on the edit standard test text icon. We can see some text which I have actually entered before. Exercise program, ABI normal etc. You can add more text to this if you want. And describe the patient's results from the test you have just undertaken. For instance, toe pressures and ABI's abnormal and ABI's abnormal, suspect moderate PAD. Press OK to accept your text changes at this stage. This is how you create a new patient for the database. First of all, go to the Patient menu and then select the Create New Patient icon. This will now show you a window where you can create the patient ID. Title, first name, surname of the patient, etc. So you need to put in here a unique identifier for the patient. Their title, which is a drop-down, can be added in. Here we can add in their surname and first name. Here we can put in the address, like so. and the phone number. If they have an insurance number, this can also be entered. And then you can select the institution. Typically, this will be a hospital name and then the department. The patient's GP can also be added or selected from a drop-down. This drop-down will list all the previous medics that have been added in. To enter a medic or medical staff, select this icon. Add the patient's height in centimetres and their weight, and whether they are male or female, You can add the date of birth by clicking on this box. Add in the date of birth starting with the year they were born, 1944, March 16th, 
so you can see 74 years old. And in this case, their BMI is 26, which is calculated from the height and weight entered. Patient notes can also be added here. Press OK. The patient is listed here and we are ready to do some measurements. The minimum data required to save a patient in the database is patient ID and surname. We are now going to show you how to record a new patient test. Go to the patient menu and select open patient and select the patient that we entered the patient's details before. In this instance, it was John Smith. You can double click or press open. And now you can see his details here. You can now go to patient menu and select new patient test. This is the icon with a Doppler. Then you can select the profile. We previously put in the profile which was Diabetic Clinic. You can take the Doppler and use it to measure the brachial pressures. And these can be entered here on the right side and left side of the patient. Now we are ready to start recording on the left dorsalis pedis archery of the patient. On the Doppler we have two buttons shown. One is the play button and one is the green tick. The play button, button 1, will run the trace. The tick will actually move from box to box. So this will allow you to jump boxes to record waveforms in different locations. First of all, we will press play and obtain a signal from the Doppler. Here we see there is a Doppler signal, and now you can see it auto-scales to maximise the screen height. The range can also be selected here, or you can set it to auto. You can also change the time base, 3 seconds, 6 seconds, 12 seconds, 24 seconds, etc. Now you can see a nice triphasic waveform. To stop the trace, press the space button on the PC or the stop button on the Doppler. If you want to measure pressures, press the middle button on the Doppler, which is the pressure symbol. This will release the Doppler but not delete the waveform. Now you can make the pressure measurement in the normal way, with a cuff around the ankle. When this is done, you can press the green tick on the Doppler and enter the systolic pressure 
which you obtained from this fig. Press OK and the Doppler waveform is now put into the left or Salus Peters box. Systolic pressure is shown and the index, which is the ABI index, is shown in brackets. In this case, it is 1.12. As you can see, the box is now flashing and moves to the next vessel. Move the Doppler to the appropriate vessel, in this case the left posterior tibial artery. Press the play button on the Doppler and we can repeat the measurements accordingly. To freeze the trace, you can use the red stop button on the Doppler or the space bar on the PC. You can press the pressure button again to release the Doppler and it allows you to measure the pressure, in this case 135. Press the green tick on the Doppler and the results go into the box. We can continue obtaining more signals until we have a complete profile. If you want to scroll back the trace, you can use the scroll key shown here. And this will accelerate the trace back to the section of the trace that looks acceptable. Again, you can now enter the pressure and the index is shown at the top of the screen. We can now press the green tick and the measurements go into the appropriate box. Continue the measurements on the right posterior tibial artery. The enter key also mimics the acceptance key and will move the data across. This key will also copy the on-screen trace to the profile. Now we have come to the test type change because we are undertaking a mixed profile. You are now prompted to change the Doppler probe to the PPG probe to allow us to record toe pressures. After we have set up the PPG system, we place the toe cuff around the base of the great left toe. Then attach the PPG sensor to the end of the great left toe.
We are now ready to measure the left toe pressure. Press OK and now we can press the green arrow on the Doppler. You will see the trace move across the screen. And this will change with the gain setting shown on the top left hand side of the screen. The higher the gain setting means that the signal is weaker and the blood flow is smaller. We will now inflate the cuff carefully up to the systolic pressure, plus 30. And wait for the line to go flat. Deflate the cuff by pulling on the trigger release, ensuring that the white line is placed within the green band. As the deflation continues, the traces will return. and eventually it will stop and detect the first systolic pressure. Always remember to deflate fully the cuff, otherwise the number on the right hand side, which is the cuff pressure, will continue to flash yellow as a warning. You can use the scroll keys on the Doppler to move the trace to the first returning pulse. This is shown as 125 mm pressure. Press the green tick on the Doppler and then the PPG waveform is shown. Press the Save button on the Doppler and the waveform and pressures will move from here into this box. Now we are ready to undertake the right great toe, so we need to move the cuff and the sensor to the other toe. We will do this and repeat the measurement. Inflate the cuff until the pulses disappear and then deflate the cuff ensuring that the white line is on the green band. It is important that the red stop button is shown on the bottom left of the real-time screen. This shows you that the automatic detection of the returning pulse is now activated. You will see the pressure in the top right-hand side is now flashing yellow. Deflate fully by pulling the trigger release. Now we have the pressure shown here, 114. Then we can press the green tick and accept. Press the save button to save in the box and now we have completed the profile. The test type is ready to change back to Doppler. Just scroll through the results and you can now see that we have completed toe pressures. The numbers in brackets are the toe brachial index, TBI. If this is less than 0.64, then this indicates that you have arterial disease. A TBI above 0.7 is normal. You can expand this window by clicking and dragging it across the screen to review the results. Click and drag back so you can make the real-time screen quite large.
Use the Save button to save the completed profile in the patient database. Here we can now edit the test details. The patient was seen by the podiatrist, but we can add in now that they were diabetic and that they also had a leg ulcer. On the test summary side, we had previously entered information and now we can add in that his ABI is normal and TBI is normal. Press OK, then save the changes to the database. And now we can print the results. As we have all the results for the diabetic clinic, we can go to Print Profile and look at printing the results. This is set as your default printer, but there is also a DocuPrinter, which is a PDF generator. If you press OK, this will now produce a PDF of your results. As you can see here, we have four Doppler waveforms. On the header, we have all the information about the patient, their demographics, and the right and left brachial pressures. On the second page are shown the toe results. And then on the third page has the patient's notes and test summary. To move these toe waveforms onto the first page, we need to close the window and go to the settings menu and select system options. At the moment it defaults to four traces on the printout but this can be changed up to a maximum of 12. We will select 8 in this case on the printout. You can also put in your institution name. Now we go to Print Profile again. Select DocuPrinter and press OK. Here we have PPG waveforms and the Doppler waveforms on page 1 of the printout. The second page will have the patient notes and the test summary. If we press print, this will go to a location that you select and these can be added to a directory location of your choice. Here we can demonstrate the Doppler calculations and how they can be enabled. The Doppler calculations are available in version 5.1 of the software. To select the calculations, go to the Settings menu and then go to System Options. Select Trace tab and you have a list of the calculations that are integral in the 5.1 software version. For instance, we can select Heart Rate and on this type of waveform, Pulsatility Index. As you can see, we can calculate a number of parameters here.
Press OK. We can then click and drag across to review the results very clearly. Heart rate being 59. Pulsatility index is 12.1. And it is an average of 5 cardiac cycles. The 5 cardiac cycles which have been used are complete cardiac cycles and can be shown by going to System Options. Trace tab and select Show Calculation Markers. These calculation markers here show the short one being the peak systolic point, the middle length one being the start of the waveform, and the long one being the most negative point in the reverse flow. Alternatively, if you have a waveform which is above the zero line, as in monophasic flow, the long marker will indicate the most negative part of the waveform within each cardiac cycle. You can see here these are the results. If we select System Options again and the Trace tab, we can also calculate other parameters like flow rate and blood velocity etc. On the waveform stored here, you can right click and then select cursors on the waveform. Move these cursors to give you the values where the cursor crosses the white line, which is the maximum value. In this case, 1.88 kHz on cursor 1. Cursor 2 can be moved to this waveform here, and that gives you 2.07 kHz. Nothing in the reverse flow. The mean value is 1.01 .01 and 1.16 at those points. You can also replay the audio by pressing play waveform. As you can hear, this is the bi-directional signal from the Doppler. You can also enter or modify the systolic pressure here. You can select a different part of the waveform if it was recording in, say, 6 second mode. Or you can expand the waveform by selecting 3 seconds on the time base here. Then using the scroll keys, scroll back the waveform to a suitable waveform shape. These can now be saved. We have now saved 6 seconds of data to the database, even though you are displaying 3 seconds. This section shows you how to import files from the Doppler. First of all, we need to get the patient details on the screen. Go to the Patient menu, select Open Patient to open the database, and then select a patient. In this case, we will use the previous patient, John Smith. Now select the Doppler icon and select Import from DMX. The DMX Doppler must be switched on and connected to the PC with its USB cable. The Doppler icon must be green. Click on Import from DMX and now you have a new window that says Import Tests from DMX. Here you can import individual files. 
The VAS files are the Doppler files and the PPG files are from the PPG recordings. We can import four vascular and two PPG files. Alternatively, you can select all tests by using this icon. You can also notice that you can select just vascular files or just PPG files, or both vascular combined with PPG files to be displayed. There is a tick box here which automatically deletes files on the Doppler, but only after saving onto DR5. This is a very useful feature to improve the throughput of patients and is a time saver. We press the import button to import all six traces. These will now be imported shown by the status bar. We have imported all six traces and the date and time stamp shown on each one. If you want to move these freely around the screen, you can. Alternatively, select Arrange Windows and this allows you to arrange the windows into a tidy format. You have to select a profile so we will now do the Diabetic Clinic profile again, which had the four Doppler traces and two toe traces. You simply have to remember or note down which Doppler trace was taken from which vessel. This is easily done by recording them in a standard order. Here we've got 13.34 etc. We can now simply just take the waveform and click and drag it into the appropriate vessel name. Then we can do the same with the PPG waveforms. If you notice, the PPG waveforms aren't allowed to be put into a Doppler waveform box, but are allowed to go into PPG boxes. So once these are in the correct place, we can enter the brachial pressures of the patient and that will then allow the indexes to be calculated once the pressures have been inserted. Here we can right click on each of the waveform boxes and enter the ankle pressure for each vessel. You can click and drag, and now you can see the systolic pressure with the index, which is the ankle brachial index, which is a ratio of the ankle pressure divided by the highest of the arm pressures. In this case, it is 135 divided by 122. We can continue to enter these pressures in each waveform box. We can review the indexes as well as the pressures.
The pressures are also shown here with these boxes. Save the results by pressing the Save Changes icon, and we can also now add in the test details. The patient notes are here and a test summary can be added and make some comments like this. After inputting data you can save changes and print to paper, or print to the PDF generator. Here are the results we have just obtained. Now we will look at system options. Click on the Settings menu and then System Options. Now you can see the Systems Options window, which we can move to one side. And here we can change the number of traces on the printout. Enable or disable the ICD codes appearing on the printout. Also Patient Notes and Test Summary. If these three are not ticked, then a blank area is produced. You can also add in your institution name on the printout. On the Trace tab you can select the calculations which will appear on the stored traces that you can see here. You can select grid lines which shows a fine grid line with half and full scale, with 1 second and 2 second markers. On the General tab we can change the measurement units from metric to imperial or vice versa. The Set Password tab allows you to change the password. The current password is lowercase dr5 and then you can change it to a new password and confirm. You must remember the new password that was set, otherwise you will lock yourself out of the system. The database tab allows you to change the location of your database. The default is the local database on your PC. The local database with set path means that you can store your database onto a server or another drive on the network. The one that is greyed out here is the SQL connection string. This can only be selected when you have the appropriate activation code for the Enterprise version. The Enterprise version allows connection to a full SQL system, which exits on a hospital server somewhere. So here I can go back to Local Database and press OK. The Backup tab allows you to specify your backup location. You can browse for it on different servers and then select one of these. Then if you click on the Database button, which is the Safe icon, it will automatically back up your database to your specified location. There is a GDT interface built into the system, 
which can be enabled by clicking here. The server path and file paths can be set up to work with a full GDT system, which is a file communication system to a patient database. So that has taken you through all the system options available on the DR5 version 5.1 software. At any time you can add medical staff to the database. To do this go to Patient menu and select Edit Medic. Here we have three doctors already entered. To do this select Edit. And this allows you to edit their details in case they have moved location from this institution to another institution. You can also edit the patient details at any point in time by clicking on the patient details icon. Here we have the patient details. We can add in anything to the patient notes and other data here. We can also add medical staff. Here we can add any medical staff that are not on the drop down list. So we can add Dr. Jones. and their telephone number. The institution they are from, and there is also a drop down on this. The medical information can be added into the system. Now we have another Dr. Jones, Jim Jones, from the Department of Surgery.